Act one, scene one, Mark! Sharon Horn Elstrom here. I want one of those clipboards that, that start things off. I don't have one. Or whatever those, what are they called? I'm sure there's a name for them in the acting or theater world that has the, the little chopper thing. What's that thing called? Anybody know? Put it in the comments below. Sharon Horn Elstrom here, and our idiom, our expression today is get your act together. I'm going to share 10 ways to get your act together to supersize and grow your business. Now, this idiom, this expression, that original origin isn't known, but it's believed to have come from the theater or the movie industry, where if somebody was performing and they were struggling or being a prima donna or not behaving in the way that they wanted to get the shot they needed, they would say, get your act together. You need to get your act together. Meaning, and then in the 1960s, it became popular in the business world and it became super duper popular and people say all the time now about all kinds of behavior get your act together which means get organized perform the way you're supposed to be performing and behave appropriately to the situation do what you're supposed to do be effective be appropriate be okay in any given situation so if you are struggling at work i know that um, some people are struggling with working from home uh, your boss might say, you know, might have a one-on-one -on -one Zoom call with you and say, hey, you've got 30 days to get your act together working from home or we're going to have a problem. Here's the expectations, etc. Something like that. Uh, there's tons of examples. I can think of all kinds of examples. I guarantee I have told my children and been told by my parents once upon a time to get my act together, meaning fly straight, fly right, quit misbehaving, study hard, buckle down, do what you're supposed to do, do what you should do, etc. We all have heard that throughout our entire lives, most of us. So what are 10 ways to build our company, to supersize our business that are considered getting our act together? Well, one is to install a business operating system. As your business grows, when you first start out, you probably don't need one, but as your business grows, you want a business operating system, depending on your industry, to help to automate, simplify, and standardize different activities that you do over and over and over again. I love automation. I think that sometimes we can go too far with automation. If you ever tried to call the your cell phone company or utilities have gotten better, but some of these companies have gotten so far removed from having human beings that they have automations and bots and automated response to your questions on answering machines and things. It's super duper frustrating to try to call and get customer service or help sometimes. So we don't want to go too far. We want to keep a human element to our business depending on where we are in our business and what we offer. But a business operating system can help us to automate the things that should be automated so the repetitive things we're not taking our time and energy. Number two, we need to establish what is success in our mind and for our organization. What does supersizing your business look like for you? Number three, we want to articulate and activate our core values. Our businesses need to be built on the foundation of who we are, the core values, the things that are important to us and our, our ideal customers as well. So we all have things that are super important to us. Family, for example, might be your core value. So you're gonna make different business decisions and business structural ideas and implement different things in order to help and make it possible for you to put your family first and incidentally then let other people in your organization be able to put their families first too. That's just one example. Family is a core value. Love is a core value. All kinds of core values. Passion, um, excellence, all kinds of them. And we don't have time to talk about all the core values today. You can just Google it and you'll get a list of literally hundreds of them. Uh, fourth, we want to have a shared passion, a shared uh, desire for our organization, but also for the people that we serve. So we want to identify who are our perfect clients. Who do we love working with and how are we going to serve them? We want to have a passion and a desire to serve that group of people in order to create and supersize the business that we want. Five, we want to clarify accountability, roles, and responsibilities. Uh, a lot of the, the clients and the customers I work with these days, they find challenges in the area of human resources, primarily because as you grow and supersize, things change really rapidly. And if the roles and responsibilities and clear delineation of who does what isn't specified, people get confused. Have you ever worked for two bosses? I have. 
terrible, right? Because one boss has certain expectations, another boss has other expectations. I finally had to sit all three of us in one room and, and map out what each of their expectations were and what I would and would not or could or could not do for them because it was so frustrating. They each had conflicting priorities for me and that wasn't working. So make sure that you have clear roles and responsibilities. I always like to do um, responsible individuals. So when we're assigning tasks and things, we have an RI or responsible individual and it's on a piece of paper so everybody knows who it is. It's like having a phone chart with everybody's phone numbers on it. We have a a responsibility list of different tasks and activities in our businesses and you know exactly who to call it's actually on our phone list who to call when you need a certain thing number six uh, get the right people in the right seats uh, again as your company is growing and building and supersizing a lot of times you bring someone into your organization in one area and aspect but as the business changes and as they grow and develop and change, they fit into different roles and different seats, different positions in your organization. You want to be aware of that. And usually as you get bigger, you have a whole department that's aware of that and keeps an eye on that for you called human resources. But that's just something to make sure that you take into consideration as you are getting your act together to grow and build and supersize your business. Know when you need to hire a position, know when you need to add a position, know when you need to let a position or an individual go because they're not right for your organization anymore due to core values, passion, uh, roles and responsibilities, etc. or where you need to move them around. It's like a big giant puzzle, right? Building and supersizing our business is a giant puzzle, especially with resource handling, where you just move the pieces and the puzzles around to create what it is that you want. It's an ever-changing, flowing puzzle. Uh, I forget what number we're on. I think seven. Uh, meet regularly to solve issues and solve problems. Now, I've been in organizations that do the weekly meeting and it's a complete and utter waste of time. I've been in other organizations where you hop in, here's the meeting, here's the agenda, it's totally productive and it moves the business ahead. So make sure that you're meeting regularly but the meetings are covering the things that are important and they're to solve problems and issues and to communicate and do all the good things that we wanted meetings to do and not doing any of the bad things that we don't want meetings to do. And that good and bad is of course defined by you. Eight, um, compartmentalize your issues. Meaning, <clears throat> take, it, it's a big job running a, a big business, right? And growing and supersizing a business, being the CEO of that. You have to compartmentalize the different problems, issues and challenges that you're faced with every day and divvy them up and share responsibility for solving them with others on your team. I guess that's what I mean by that. Uh, financial issues are solved and sometimes you bring other parties in, but with the financial people in your organization. Marketing challenges are dealt with by marketing part of your business, etc. cetera. Uh, practice financial transparency and make and manage to a scorecard. Key performance indicators. Uh, again, I've been in businesses that that look at the wrong things and then wonder why they're struggling in the areas that matter. Uh, there's, a, uh, there's a whole spectrum of belief about financial transparency. It's up to you, of course, but again, I've worked in and with organizations that have complete financial transparency. Everybody knows what's going on, what the resources are, what things cost, what everybody else makes. Believe it or not, there are organizations where everybody knows what everybody else makes and it's not a big taboo secret. Um, but it depends on the culture of the organization, what works best. I would contend that open communication and honesty and integrity always works best. But then again, that's just my opinion. But the more transparent you are financially, the more uh, uh, generous and kind and giving you are with the people in your organization, the teammates and the people that you bring on board, I think the faster and easier you grow your business because you gain loyalty and trust from the people that you count on most because you're building the business together. Just my opinion. Uh, have a scorecard though, have key performance indicators that you're looking at on a regular basis. Some things we look at every single day, some things we only look at once a month, 
some things we know that we just look at year over year because we're just looking for the long-term impact of them. But know what those things are for your business and for the function that you manage in your organization. Uh, and then finally, no, I got two more. <coughs> oh, no, I guess I got one more. Find a community and nurture your spirit. Find a community of, I guess, if this is, this is a, a CEO one. Find a community, meaning a mastermind group, a group of people, a team of people, a board of directors or advisors, but that's different than a mastermind group. A community that helps you to continually improve and grow and get ideas in and outside of your industry to uh, make sure that you're always getting your act together, always thinking about the big picture of your business and what your next step is, where you're going, how you, and creative ways to get there. Uh, and you want to consistently apply all of these things by, I say, by creating processes and procedures and systems so that it's not just a hodgepodge of how they're applied in your business. You have a plan for incorporating them into your business on a long-term basis. You can do it with daily habits. You can do it with routines. You can do it with processes, procedures, different systems, different automations, different softwares. But make sure that they're all being built into your business. So that's a very long way to say get your act together with respect to growing and supervising your business. I'd love to know your experience with this particular idiom and expression. Like I said, I guarantee I've been told to get my act together on numerous occasions, especially by my ex-husband. I used to hear that a lot. Get your act together. And my act was pretty together, I thought. Everybody's opinion's different. All right, have an awesome day. Any questions, comments, concerns about this idiom, hit me up. Otherwise, I'll be with you tomorrow with another interesting idiom. What does it mean? Where does it come from? How might you use it in supersizing your business, maybe even in your life? Have an amazing day.